Russia and the power of communism. Kathmandu, forbidden to outsiders until recently. delegation headed by the Vice President of India, Dr. Sarvapali Radhakrishnan, philosopher, statesman and diplomat, which reflects Indian interest in this highly strategic realm of Nepal. In a counter move of power politics, the Chinese Reds have sent an imposing delegation headed by no less than the Vice Premier of China, Ulan Fu. Communists at a coronation may seem odd, but the Chinese Reds are quite willing to play a game of intrigue at a royal court. The stakes are high. Possible control of Nepal on the Indian side of the Himalayas. The American delegation arriving in Kathmandu, including magnetic Mrs. Robert Lowe Baker, prominent in civic and political affairs of Washington and New York. Accompanied by our tall acting ambassador in India, Frederick Bartlett and his lady. Over there on the left, a world-famous name in medicine, Dr. Charles Mayo of the Mayo Clinic with Mrs. Mayo. Oh yes, there is one other member of the American delegation. The United States, the only country to send three full ambassadors to this Himalayan coronation. The chief of protocol, Sardar Prakat Man Singh, meets me with a most impressive 1929 Buick. License number, if you can read it, 46. The 46th automobile ever to reach this country. of Nepal are famous for their herds of wild elephants, many of whom are captured and tamed. Kathmandu traffic hazards include elephants. to drive over an American steel bridge, every part of which was carried over the mountains by men. Frantic last-minute decorations are going up everywhere. The legend is that the tree of paradise, taking the form of a man, strolled into this valley, liked it, and promised to send some sacred wood for a shrine, which he did. Cat, meaning wood, Mandu, structure. A city of a quarter of a million people, with hundreds of temples and shrines.
After saying a prayer, this Buddhist monk places a flower on his head. Many Nepalese still adhere to the aboriginal spirit and demon worship of Bumpoism, others to Hinduism, and many are Buddhists. This image of Kali the destroyer tells us that it is a land of exotic religion. God Vishnu, many Nepalese call him Narayan, reclining on the serpent of eternity, sculptured more than a thousand years ago. The burning gods where the dead are cremated, just as in India along the Ganges. Ashes thrown into the river where children splash and play. In the distance now, the main range of the Himalayas, nearly a hundred miles off, a land of mountain and jungle trails. But for some 30 years, the rich Rana nobles imported a few automobiles. All of them brought over the mountains from India in this way. It takes a hundred or more men to carry a car, depending on its weight. The contractor and his assistant, why should they walk? What difference do an additional two or three hundred pounds make? <laughs> Meanwhile, from one of the palaces to which visiting ambassadors are assigned, we ride in state to present our credentials to King Mahendra in silk topper and striped pants. All delegations instructed to bring formal clothes. Look who's here, on his way to the coronation. The Sarge substituting for the Himalayan boss man. Still the crew chief. Two holy men from India, looking for nirvana or whatever Hindu holy men look for. At the palace to present my credentials, accompanied by Chuda Prasad Sharma, the Nepalese foreign minister, and by Paul Rose, head of the American technical aid mission to Nepal, who borrowed his topper from the British ambassador. I am told that I must bow three times before His Majesty. Let's see if I do it right.
Majesty, I've come halfway around the world to present the congratulations of my country. May I present Mr. Rose of the United States Mission. Your Majesty, I'm honored. Mahendra Bir Bikram Shah Deva is kept busy with ceremonies and conferences. For long generations, Nepal was ruled by those hereditary prime ministers of the Rana family. But in 1951, Mahendra's father, King Tribhuvana, grew tired of being a puppet, escaped from the palace, flew to India, and then came rebellion in Nepal. And the rule of the hereditary Rana prime ministers collapsed, and the king returned a real sovereign but only for a short time, and upon his death, his son seized the throne. Chinese red in their severely cut black robes, the uniform of communism. The red ambassador arriving for an audience with the king, escorted by the Nepalese foreign minister, Chuda Prasad Sharma. Behind the scenes, the game of power politics is in full swing. Soon after this coronation event, the news came, a treaty signed between the Chinese Reds and King Mahendra's Nepal. The British delegation, in the blue mantle of a Knight of the Garter, Lord Scarborough, Chamberlain to the Queen, former Air Minister Lord Delisle, General Anderson, a British commander in Malaya, and an Oxford scholar in full academic robes. troops from the British Army fighting the Reds in Malaya. The Gurkhas originally were Rajput warriors in India. Centuries ago, they fled from the Muslim invaders, conquered Nepal, and later the British recruited them for the Gurkha regiments of the Kipling tradition. And Lord Scarborough presents a sword to King Mahendra, informing him that he is now an honorary British general. The eyes of Buddha overlooking Kathmandu. Tradition says he was born in Nepal, the teacher of Nirvana and the law. The eyes of Buddha penetrating, inscrutable. Eyes of mystery that see all you do in Kathmandu. Before the entrance to the shrine, pilgrims prostrate themselves and chant, Om Mani Padme Om. Om Mani Padme Om. While the prayer wheels spin, each turn a thousand prayers. Well, what pilgrims are these? Say, you fellows, you're going the wrong way. Your prayers won't be heard at all unless you turn and go the other way. Still looking for their dream world, even in far Kathmandu. 